In the 18th century, Congressman Matthew Lyon went to jail for saying supposedly illegal words. But that didn't stop him from winning re-election, even while behind bars. The story of Matthew Lyon is a real-life political thriller. Vermont voters elected him to Congress in 1797. He was a Democrat-Republican, the minority party at the time. With the Federalist Party firmly in control of all three branches of government, Congress passed the Sedition Act, and President John Adams signed it in 1798. The act essentially outlawed criticism of the federal government. Now this presented quite a problem for Democrat Republicans. How could a minority party gain power if its members couldn't legally say anything bad about the opposition? Lyon was the first prominent person charged under the Sedition Act. He had started his own newspaper. It was called The Scourge of Aristocracy and Repository of Important Political Truth. He published an article critical of President John Adams, accusing him of, quote, unbounded thirst for ridiculous pomp, foolish adulation, and selfish avarice. He also blasted the president for using religion to drum up war against France, writing that he could not support the executive, quote, when I shall see the sacred name of religion employed as a state engine to make mankind hate. Lyon's political enemies also convinced a Vermont paper to publish a letter he wrote before the Sedition Act was even passed. In it, he called the president bullying and the Senate responses stupid. Lyon contended the act violated the First Amendment, but he was convicted and sentenced to four months in jail, a thousand dollar fine, and court costs. He served time in a 16 by 12 foot cell used for felons, counterfeiters, thieves, and runaway slaves. Judge William Patterson, an avid nationalist and supporter of the Federalist Party, lamented the fact that he couldn't impose a harsher sentence. Lyon won re-election while in jail by a landslide. And two years later, in a beautiful twist of irony, Lyon cast the deciding vote for Thomas Jefferson, when a tie in the Electoral College threw the 1800 election to the House. Jefferson's win meant the Sedition Act would no longer be enforced, and the third president made good on that promise by refusing to enforce the Sedition Act even before it was ever repealed.